Hello, welcome to Misty West's teardown of the Dyson Air Wrap. My name is Phil and I'm a design engineer at Misty West, a research and engineering consultancy based in Vancouver, BC, specializing in early stage product development and prototyping. This is a follow-up to our previous video where my colleague got a bomb makeover with the Dyson Air Wrap. I have a particular interest in doing teardowns because it shows you both the good and the bad ways of designing products. One of my previous teardowns for Misty West was of a simple human soap dispenser. The Dyson Air Wrap is a high-end hair styler that uses the Kawanda effect to straighten, curl, and dry hair. The Kawanda effect is a phenomenon where a jet of air will attach itself to a surface of an object caused by a pressure differential between the surface of an object and ambient pressure. The clever use of this technology allows the Dyson Air Wrap to pull and curl hair effortlessly with its attachments. I was super excited to hear that Madison wanted to buy and tear down a Dyson Air Wrap. What do you like about Dyson products? They're like super easy to use. Also, for friggin' $784, we have really high expectations for the design. So we'll start from the bottom and move our way up the assembly. The first item that we tore down in the assembly was this magnetic filter attachment. Tini and I both had our minds blown when we discovered that the attachment was magnetic. Underneath the filter is another part with a metal mesh. This part is fairly complex and has an insert molded metal part inside of it with many complex injection molded poles. The next item is the power cord. At first glance, this looks like a power supply or a transformer, but my colleague Walker <laughs> no, you gotta be you are way behind. <laughs> my colleague Walker <laughs> tells me that this is actually just an AC line filter for EMI suppression and certification. To prevent tangled wires, Dyson designed a custom slip ring. This required custom contacts, lifetime testing, and conductive lubrication to get this to work well, and is a really difficult engineering feat to get right. After removing several screws, the entire assembly just pops out of the main housing. The amount of thought that went into making the sub-assembly so compact and neatly wired is truly tremendous. There are features in the injection molded parts for strain relief, cabling, and custom rubber components. The button sliders are also pretty cool. They've molded ratcheting features inside of the plastics for this nice tactile feel. There's also a spring-loaded latch on the back for the Dyson Air Wrap attachments. The design also has lots of snap bits and minimal screws in order to save on assembly time and reduce parts count. The only disappointing thing is that this entire thing is just made of plastic. Removing two covers exposes the electronics. The main board, which has two PCBs stacked on top of each other, and a rigid flex PCB for the switch assembly. Two other interesting things to point out are the inclusion of a negative ion generator, which prevents static buildup and frizzy hair, and a spring-loaded pin for grounding through this metal foil on the enclosure. Removing a custom clip allows us to open the housing and expose the motor and the heater. This custom clip not only holds the two pieces together, but it also holds all the cabling. Once the main body is disassembled, we get a closer view of the heater, the PCB assembly, and the infamous Dyson digital motor. The heater is pretty straightforward. It's just a resistive coil inside of the fiberglass enclosure with a thermistor at the top for temperature sensing. They went through the trouble of putting a custom silicone boot over the motor, possibly to prevent vibrations and noise. The last part of the housing holds this plastic part, which contains the metal grill and the negative ion electrode. Diving a little deeper into the electronics, the Dyson Air Wrap has two main assemblies, the main board and the rigid flex switch assembly. The rigid flex switch assembly is pretty straightforward. It's just a bunch of toggle switches, but they needed to have a flex portion of the PCB in order to wrap around the contour of the Air Wrap. The main board has a microcontroller, DC power components, and three large MOSFETs, two of which are for motor control. There's also a full bridge rectifier that you can see here with the four diodes and the giant capacitor on the back. There's also a super interesting insert molded aluminum heat sink in this enclosure that mounts directly onto the back of the triax with a thermal pad for heat sinking. The Dyson Air Up is an amazing example of great engineering work and design for manufacturing. You sound super stoked on it. I'm sorry, I'm such a robot, man. Quit thinking, just okay. quit thinking. Okay. Just... Listen, like people that know what they're talking about are gonna like, <laughs> are, gonna, are gonna tear like, you to yo, shreds on the good. internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, Phil kind of got tired of this and left, so you've got me. You're, uh, you're stuck with me now. So in conclusion, the Dyson Air Wrap is an amazing piece of engineering and a great example of design for manufacturing. So, like, the fact that they included a custom slip ring, uh, magnetic latches, 
uh, like small touches like wire management, vibration, sound dampening, all that stuff really show that this product is meant to last. At times it felt like some components were overly complex or unnecessary, but it's clear that Dyson values speed, ease of assembly, as well as usability. The design decisions made in the Dyson Air Rack are really good examples of product design and engineering design. No, this doesn't work if I say I. This is written for someone else. <laughs> now you know how I feel, bro. Here, bro you wrote it. This concludes Misty West teardown of the Dyson Air Wrap. We look forward to sharing more teardowns and other content with you. So please subscribe to our channel. You can also visit mistywest.com slash rnelab to watch our other teardowns. Thanks for watching.